Well, I always knew this group was close to God, but I had no idea that you would just go with it and make it official. Uh, good morning, I'm Sam Adams. I have the honor to uh, serve you as mayor of uh, Portland, the Rose City. And uh, don't tell Tim O'Reilly, but um, it's good to be back to my favorite conference. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've got the, I think, the, the best group of open sourcers in uh, the nation are right here in this region and uh, many of you in this room. I want to thank Christy and Reed and uh, the conference chairs and everybody. And this is very cool, I think. So good job, everybody. We already took pictures, but just in case. How much are these? Fifteen, that is a great deal, I swear. Should you... I got mine for free, though, so... That's an even better deal. Um, I was, uh, having worked in, in city government for a long time and having been impressed with the potential and, uh, of city government in terms of fortifying democracy and, and improving uh, citizen and constituent services, and also as a, a hub, a contributor, a first procurer, first buyer of open source, um, I was very excited to um, have the opportunity to run for city council and then for mayor, um, and, and also have the opportunity to influence who got hired into positions of leadership in the city's uh, technology uh, services bureau. Um, and I'm really, uh, I wanna start by thanking the team at the Bureau of Technology Services uh, and the staff in my office, including uh, Skip Newberry in the back. Thank you, Skip. Because on a, on a shoestring, and with a lot of help from a lot of people in, in this room and elsewhere, uh, we, are, uh, we are really, you know, the, the results are still early, but we're really having uh, early progress and great early signs uh, for Portland city government uh, to be a test bed and a living laboratory and uh, for uh, open source technology innovation and also better democracy and better customer service. So I want to uh, thank the team at the Bureau of Technology Services and Skip and others for that. We, our early efforts, as, as you probably know, were civic apps and a lot of sort of government apps initiatives that you might or might not be following have sort of faltered or winnowed or, or atrophied. There are a few around the nation um, that still go strong, but most who started out really have not been able to sustain momentum. Um, I think part of the reason that ours continues is the fact that we are regional in our data sets and we are regional in uh, who we try to entice to work with us. And I'm happy at the fact that, um, again, our efforts are early, a uh, year and a half old, but I'm really uh, pleased that we were recently rewarded by the Oregon Society of Professional Journalists the first Freedom Award for the fact that Civic Apps is turning over a lot more information, making uh, local regional governments a lot more transparent. Um, it gives me confidence to keep going. And Civic Apps is, uh, I would hope you would view it and continue to push and encourage us as a first effort, as a, as a first step, not the last step. Today I'm going to um, announce for the first time at this conference sort of a next step in that and uh, encourage you to uh, help us uh, figure out um, a coherence to uh, the city's work, a, an opportunity to link up uh, your city government, other governments to the life of the city. And it's uh, a project I call City Sync. And yes, we bought both URLs. <laughs> Smarty pants. Um, S-I-N-K and S-Y-N-C. 
And uh, if <clears throat> I could tell a, a half the audience didn't understand what the hell I was talking about. So if you're a Twitter follower of Mayor Sam Adams, then you just received a tweet um, that shows our, oh, it didn't let it go through. <laughs> there, it went through. Um, that begins to put some framework, at, again, and coherence to that interaction. Um, and our goal is for this to take sort of our burden, you know, our, our growing partnership and our growing understanding of the opportunities for public, private, academic, uh, labor, NGO, and others. Uh, and begin to focus it in a way that will be very compelling uh, to um, Portlanders and, and beyond. Um, this, you will see when you look at it, is um, very, very uh, 1.0. But what I've learned from Civic Apps is that we're, and what we are pursuing in, in CitySync is, um, how to, to begin to go from um, data sets to achieving some strategic goals. So for example, I know from a University of Chicago study that neighborhood, in neighborhoods, regardless of how transient, the, uh, how, how much movement churn there is, the normal sort of a, a, uh, a common understanding is that neighborhoods that have a lot of churn and who lives there, like high rental neighborhoods, um, can be very vulnerable to crime. But the University of Chicago study showed that actually the percentage of neighbors who know each other and uh, have contact information and know whether or not they have kids and generally, you know, a little bit about their neighbor's life, it's the higher percentage of that neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor knowledge and contact is directly, more directly related to how safe that particular part of the city is. So that, that is something that through our collective efforts we can begin to facilitate. Even if we only get uptick through open source or through technology, even if we only got an uptick of you know, 10%, 15%. Um, over the percentage of neighbors who know each other now, that would be a huge positive benefit in our efforts right now to fight uh, gun violence and gang violence. It would be a huge percentage of increase in effort with a infinitesimal investment in the scheme of things. So as you look at this, um, City Sync, you will, I hope, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be, our team's going to be clear about the kinds of evidence-based uh, changes we would like to see in the city that lend themselves to the work that you're focused on in this organization. That was just, you know, one example, um, sort of ripped from the headlines that um, we all read about. The, um, but there's been amazing amount of success. We, we had a, a hackathon at Pi uh, with uh, Rick and others around education. Um, again, just to, uh, I need to do a better job, we need to do a better job of sort of getting out their opportunities. Um, again, related back to the how do we prevent kids from uh, being vulnerable to crime. Well, it's summertime, and if you don't know of anything to do that's positive, you're going to be more vulnerable to mischief or worse. So we uh, asked a group of folks to get together and do something about that. And the first thing they did was uh, understand, acknowledge, and embrace the fact that good old-fashioned, not very sexy text, texting, uh, what has really the availability of texting uh, on, on most uh, above a certain age, but among all age groups, race, demographics, income levels, that access to text, texting, um, was as small a digital divide on sort of that platform that has ever existed uh, in technology. And 
I gave them, one of the challenges we gave them is, um, you know, we know if teachers uh, notify parents and just sort of a friendly check-in, even to their own students, about homework assignments, uh, not wait till the report card comes out and the dog eats it, like used to be the case in my youth. Um, the dog was very hungry around report card time. <laughs> But if they do that kind of outreach and touching, and teachers right now with class sizes over 30, really hard to call through 30 parents, 30 students, et cetera. Uh, at our hackathon, they put together a simple text, a simple uh, text me message, messaging system where the teacher can uh, key in a text and send a friendly reminder to both parents and students uh, that that term paper was due in two days and hope they were making good progress on it. Again, yeah, I'm glad my teacher didn't have that. Um, but again, that is using technology to set folks up for success, as opposed to after the fact. And that's really what is sort of the spirit of the challenge that I give you and that I've given our own internal folks as we look to City Sync and other things is that how to use the technology to, to, to make sure, better make sure good things happen, simply put, and to ensure that we prevent as much of the bad things as possible. Um, we're also working uh, with, uh, uh, on the food side, and um, we haven't figured this one out, um, so uh, I think it's gonna be part of the conversation, or hopefully we'll come up at the Hacker's Lounge later. Um, we met with the uh, farmer's markets around the city, and we've got this great downtown's farmer's market over by the park blocks, and on Wednesdays is you know, rated the best farmer's market in the nation by many. And we know if we had more farmer's markets around the city, more people would get access to uh, better food. Uh, they now take, for example, food stamps, so it's very much affordable. It's not just sort of rich people buying fancy vegetables anymore. Um, and so we need an app, though, that connects the farmers to the markets and talks about what they're bringing in that day. So um, for those of you that are, I grew up in Newport, Oregon, so I know there's a crabbing season, and I know there's a fishing season, but most people don't know when the cherries are ripe or you know, when it's clamming time. But if they did, again, um, it would help our farmers sell more to more markets, it would help us, as part of the Portland plan, uh, have uh, more neighbors and neighborhoods um, eating better food. So it becomes, again, sort of the win-win facilitating the win-win. Um, so help us with that one, because the Portland Farmers Market um, is very interested in what we have, uh, what we can offer as an industry. The, um, the work of supporting this industry, and you are an industry, you are a targeted industry for the city of Portland. You are part of the city's economic development strategy that I've spoke about at, at previous uh, gatherings, the first economic development strategy approved by the city council in 16 years. You are one of four, so in addition to advanced manufacturing, in addition to athletic and outdoor, in addition to clean technology, there is software and digital design. So you have finally been recognized for which you are, and that is one of the most diverse, robust, creative, fleet-footed, and smart, and good-looking group uh, <laughs> of industry folks in the city of Portland. That's right, give yourselves a round of applause. Um, if you're not already participating in PDX 11, I encourage you to get involved. Uh, in the past, uh, PDX 11 is, is the moniker, one of the monikers we use to describe the actual work to move forward, the software and digital development industry. Uh, it's based on a robust uh, survey of the industry. Hopefully you were involved with that. It's based on a robust understanding of our competitive opportunity where we can compete and win against um, industry, geographically based industry clusters around the world that might be bigger than ours, but we offer some unique advantages. What came out of the surveys and what came out of the research was a very 
crisp and very clear to-do list uh, that we need to work on together. One was help with starting up a business. It doesn't, one of the great things about this industry, it doesn't necessarily initially take a whole lot of money to get the attention of more money. Now, Portland has always suffered from uh, our businesses uh, don't have access to the early, early startup capital, and then they get to a certain size and they get bought out by even bigger businesses. Um, I, I helped recruit uh, a company here, here um, that uh, made frozen yogurt. It was a great company. It expanded to 400 people. It was just bought by Dannon this year. And our coffee company was just bought by New York investors. But that's the way it is. I can't change the sort of global realities, but I can help more businesses start up so that I guess you can cash out and become incredibly wealthy. But uh, I want you to stay with your wealth in Portland and start that next company. So as part of the PDX 11, um, we're one of the first cities in the United States uh, recognizing lack of startup funds due to the Portland Seed Fund. Um, we, in the first round, we had, I think, 110 or so. Skip, how many? Huh? 128? 128 people, 128 companies pitch for the Portland Seed Funds. We put in 500,000, and then we got matched by other sources, uh, including uh, Ted Wheeler at the state, who the state treasurer is, uh, with another uh, 1.5 for a total of two. Uh, I put another th uh, $300,000 in next year's budget, and we'll do another tranche. I encourage you to apply, uh, because we are working with venture capital firms that even if you don't get selected for sort of the city's tranche, the city's portion of the money, we're also working with venture capital firms um, to make sure that we get to show off everyone who didn't necessarily get the first round of funding, but show off and help promote and give credibility for more funding in the private sector to everyone else. The second thing this industry said is we want to be mentees and help others, and we want to be mentored. We don't want to go through the pain of reinventing the learning curve unnecessarily. And so work is underway to make that matchmaking uh, in terms of mentor and mentee um, uh, as, as convenient as possible. On July 11th, we'll be holding our first of many code sprints to engage the community to develop an open source app that will actually engage people uh, and connect mentors throughout the area. I was surprised, and pleasantly so in the survey, that uh, so many of the more financially successful folks in this industry were not just willing but enthusiastic uh, to be mentees. So on July 9th, we'll be holding our first code sprints, and we'll be asking uh, folks to help us put together something that will be truly uh, useful. It's got a plug into existing platforms, and we already have, in, turn, uh, in addition to the city of Portland, Intel, IBM, Puppet Labs, and Shopniter stepping up uh, to help underwrite this effort. Uh, Skip is available if you want more information about that. And um, I'm very excited to be able to move forward on that. So that's a little bit of what's next. You've been given um, a task, as I like to assign you every, every uh, year. Your task is to solve all problems and make sure all opportunities are seized upon. And I uh, hope you're up to it. I think you are, being the best looking industry in Portland <laughs> and the smartest. Um, but I'm very excited. Uh, to make a small contribution to the efforts of the open source industry. Um, it is a key part of our digital and software. Um, it's, a, it's a key part, a key element that sets us apart uh, from other industries uh, geographically based. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, I really appreciate your work and more to come. Have a good day. Thank you.